good evening everybody thank you very much for joining in this side rahul magan here as chief executive officer of treji consulting nlp and today we are going to cover uh, one technical video which would be covering how the modeling of cva is happening we already have two videos about cva which is credit valuation adjustment or in short in the layman language this is a charge which banks are putting on the corporates because they needs to hedge their position in the interbank market even today if apple is selling uh, apple is buying or selling any foreign exchange receivables or foreign exchange payables or it could be a credit or interest rate derivative or anything which apple would like to do there is a cba for that that is a separate fact that we are dealing with the apple so of course uh, if we are dealing with the apple then this cba is very very limited in nature on the other hand if we are dealing with uh, say kingfisher or bankrupt entities like bear strands northern rock AIG, Citibank, then the credit spread would be higher, higher in the interbank market. So this model is not devised by me, but this is a model which we have taken, and this model will tell you that how the CBA is getting exact is exactly, you know, uh, getting calculated for a bank or a financial institution. So there are three part of this. One is you first receive the data uh, for the CBA. Of course, if you don't have the data, you cannot calculate anything. So first, you first you should have the data for that. so data which you received is the is you you will receive is a physical feed it is a physical feed uh, what you are going to uh, what you are what uh, you are going to receive so this is a physical feed part in this physical feed <coughs> you would be covering expected exposure you would be covering expected exposure trade positions whether it is a buy position or a sell position and so on and so forth but before moving this let me tell you what are the trade uh, what are the various things here first you have limits and threshold of a trading desk which and it, 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 it will also cover nop net overnight uh, net overnight open position or nop and op net overnight open position or nop net overnight position right then you have uh, here you have a you have a trading details like you are buying you are selling and then how here you have the collateral not all the people have collateral here so i would like to replace this with csx because sitting today everybody is having an isda with an with the counterparty so bank is having isda uh, with the with, with the corporate and the corporate is having isda with the bank so in both the cases in both the cases rather than going for a collateral you will go for a csx i'm not saying that csx do not have any collateral uh, credit spot and x shorty known as csx sometimes csx do have a collateral also that we need to take into consideration sometimes they do have a collateral also so this is not wrong to be honest right and uh, then we have uh, our data sources which we are mentioning here then we have credit lines credit lines which we are sexting to the banks or to the counter parties and based upon their credibility in the market and then we have csa which i mentioned csa and xsure and isda isda is the agreement but here i don't say csa and xsure and isda agreement because isda is divided into you know uh, four parts one is isda master 2002 uh, master agreement 2002 because 1995 uh, nobody follows right to be honest and then we have uh, rds risk disclosure statement then we have an xsure because you cannot make changes in the master agreement so you need to need have an xsure and uh, then we have this so called uh, you know i would say uh, then you have uh, this uh, which is just give me a minute you have master service master service agreement you have an xsure you have yes csx you have risk disclosure statement and then you have csx so this is how it would happen you will do the bucketing for the proxy spread and everything you know this is entire scoping whatever coming in the data this this come here and please believe me that this is just like a postmaster job so and this is for a big banks this is not for the small banks in the sense like if you have a big bank that big bank is dealing with lot of things they have credit post uh, credit uh, credit spoking uh, sorry they have a credit positioning they have a risk mitigation limits they have a trading desk they have a big trading desk and and every and the all trading desk are uh, are have their respective limits and so on and so forth so then comes to the valuation of the cva which is cva here you can see that the credit valuation adjustment here you will calculate the credit spread for liquid cvas 
credit spread for non liquid cvas but the very interesting point is the cs01 which i am which i am which i am referring here cs01 is the change of impact in the credit sensitivity of a particular bond or a foreign exchange instrument could be an interest rate derivative could be equity derivative could be commodity or could could be could be commodity derivative provided the credit spread is changed by one bips generally this world talks about dv01 which is uh, dollar value of uh, dv01 which is which is dollar duration change in one one basis point this is in dollars this is in absolute amount people talk about pv01 which is change in the present value by change in the one basis point but now the cba has moved higher in cba we talks about cs01 which is change in the credit change of the impact if the credit spread would have changed by one bips then we'll take the proxy spreads for illiquid names i am not not sure why they have taken an illiquid names here because generally if you are talking from a cba perspective and especially for an Ill illiquid positioning then it it involve a lot of cost because suppose if i'm dealing with any financial instrument it could be both side if my counterparty is illiquid or the instrument which i'm dealing with is is illiquid or both if any one of the situation is here then the cost is very high to be honest cost is very very high then you have the bucketing of uh, bucketing then you have the bootstrapping you know you know imm into into uh, you have this uh, imm tenors then you have the default grade non default grade so basically what you need to understand is cs01 which is credit spread of one basis point and believe me there is no universal formula for cs01 it vary from instrument to instrument because pv01 which is present value of one basis point is easy to calculate then cs01 uh then uh, is easy to easy to calculate your dv01 it is easy to calculate but the so called cs01 it's not easy to calculate then you move to the impact of the cba on the pnl because you very well know that the pnl uh, that the cba is is an earning surprise i'm not using an accounting term earning surprise but cba impacts your pnl yes if you are following the hedge accounting then uh, then it it might differ but if you are not then it impacts your pnl adjustment would surely be on the cba reclassification adjustment is till the time a particular position is following the hedge accounting it could continue to be in the pn uh, equity side of the balance sheet which is known as uh, oci other comprehensive income the time yet yeah, the time a particular uh, the time a particular position is getting matured it is moving a time a particular position is getting matured or it is moving to uh, pnl that this is known as a, this is known as reclassification adjustment then if you are talking about pnl and the var calculation we already told you that var is of two type which is a regulatory var and stress var and of course within var you can have several several stuff like uh, you can have a several stuff you can have one day var 95% you can have 10 day var 95% you can have one day var 99% some people calculating 99 and half percent even in the today scenario when things are very difficult to calculate and things are very hard, extremely volatile in nature but still we have people who are calculating that way so this talks about uh, this talks about this this particular part we'll take it to the pnl very important thing to discuss here is uh, this which is to calculate the implied calls and this which is where we know that if you are a trader you can do anyways that is up to you like if 10 people are calculating the var on the same thing they could they could have different answers because of their uh, confidence level which we are taking like if you want me if you want if you ask me to take a confidence level i will definitely not going to take it 95% because 95% is a very very small confidence level sitting today when majority of the financial instruments are having higher uh, cut uses cut uses which is greater than six, greater than 3 so i am not going to take that i am seriously not going to take it i am going to take 99% i am at least try myself from 97 half i will slowly move to 98 half then i move to probably 99 half and 99 and then i go to 99 half and then i see how things uh, how things it would be so but between that uh, implied calls play a very important role because uh, as we very well know that volatility is depend is, is of three types one is uh, one is uh, your so called uh, historical volatility historical volatility is something which you cannot change or taken an example we know that post trump we know that post trump 
you know things are a little bit messy in the sense like all the dollar directs which is dollar to ayana or dollar to philippines peso or dollar to zar dollar to uh, i would say singapore dollar dollar to canadian dollar they all moving up all the dollar indirects they are getting down dollar indirects or global directs which is gbp dollar euro dollar new zealand dollar and australian dollar they are falling down in that regards if you calculate the the, the, the historical walls they will also cover three things one is any exceptional uh, say take an example of gbp they, it covers three one is a flash crash that has recently happened another that has taken your gbp from 1.32 to 1.24 i suppose and another is uh, you are uh, pre exit that has taken 1.42 to 1.31 last but not the least you are uh, you know you are trump election that also uh, that all uh, in in also gbp went down that uh, in in that case also gbp went down so this is historical wall but if you take all these three out this would be the actual volatility of the gbp i'm not saying that the gbp is not a volatile currency gbp is an extremely volatile currency and it would continue to be volatile in fact gbp is is already known as as one of the volatility dodges of the globe amongst the volatility the calculus the gbp is in the list of the volatility dodges of the globe so implied wall is historical wall minus outliers plus minus uh your own expectation and computation of the uh, computation of uh, implied walls for calculating of of the bad because bad take volatility into consideration and in var if you take historical volatility in, into consideration then this is the biggest mistake people are doing var should have taken uh, var should have taken uh, you know uh, implied walls into consideration but biggest problem with the var is that if you say 10 people are calculating var number 1 everybody will cal calculate cal calculate on a different confidence level number 2 everybody would have calculate on everybody everybody would have calculate on different implied walls even the same bank can have 10 traders and 10 traders will calculate on different implied walls this is what it is all about and once everything would happen then this is what cv is all about and then the banking trading trading head can do this the regulatory reports the particular cba t plus 2 reporting what if verifying the the risk weight in the sets and we can customize this report so cba modeling is not very easy and this is this modeling what treasury consulting llp has created for you this is for a big banks but if you go to a smaller banks like india or if you go to other banks where the base three is not here like uh, brazil and other it would be very difficult for you to to get such things but yes uh, cba is something which is get which is getting fashionable uh, which is getting uh, popular day by day and at the same time uh, over the period of the time could be i think next uh, one year or so the cba modeling would be very very important with this i would like to thank you very much hope you like this video and uh, we also would like to update you that uh, we have we now have our own online academy you are welcome to reach to us in case you, you would like to have training of any courses you would like to have trainings we have more than 16 courses right now where uh, where in we teach people and by march 2017 we will cross the 16 courses to 26 or 27 courses you know our website www.thrajikasanthi.in my contact number as 9899242978 and you are also welcome to connect with me uh, at rahul.magan@thrajikasanthi.in thank you and uh, have a great day